Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of For the Continuum Conversations, the Correct Sentence Structure, Communication, Parsi, Syntax, Grammar talk show, in which I interview different individuals and find out their personal first-hand knowledge experiences with the wonderful technology known as Quantum Grammar that was brought to the public by Colin David Ife and Wayne Colin Miller. Now, my guest today is one of my best students. His name is Colin Nathaniel. He first contacted me back in April of 2020, almost three years ago. Uh, he's done numerous workshops with me. We've worked together on a few document contract postal vessel court venues, and he's going to share with you his experience uh, with correct sentence structure and how it interacts with his life and also his experiences with me. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the only quantum grammar talk show that I know of on the internet for the Continuum Conversations. And my guest today is longtime student and friend, Nathaniel. Nathaniel, welcome to the show. And would you please share your correct name? Thanks for having me. My name is Paul Colin Nathaniel, half in Nima, Paul Colin Dio, Tilde Jr. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. Um, it's great to catch up with you like this. If you don't mind, would you would you share with the viewers a little bit of background about yourself, like who you are and, and what you do and so on and so forth? Well, um, before we proceed, um, just so everyone knows, um, you know, I do, I am a public, you know, I mean, I, I am in the public, so I do work as a nurse. So um, I do, um, most of the time I do traveling, nursing, do other things. Um, I do a lot of research. Um, I try to stay current with my grammar. So there's a lot of things I do. I stay busy. I farm. Um, I like to grow my own food. Uh, there will come a time that that will be more, <laughs> real, more interesting when time comes. But I love doing those things because it's beneficial to me. And that's just who I am. So thank you. So I bet you've had some very interesting scenarios in your line of work over the past three years. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's just to say the least. <laughs> but we won't go into that too much because mm -hmm. uh, YouTube, the algorithms on YouTube don't really permit that type of talk on here. Yeah. But suffice to say that I, I, you know, I've had other people tell me the same thing. I had a guy in, uh, well, not in this country, but outside the country that had some harrowing experiences with the mm -hmm. government and things like that. But thanks to correct sentence structure, they were able to stop that trespass mm -hmm. and come out on the other side safely. So um, as far as the farming and things like that go, I was raised on a farm. So I know about sustainability and I bet mm -hmm. it's going to come. The need for Handy. that is going to come sooner than later, my friend. As, <laughs> way sooner. It's, you can see it. <laughs> you sure can. Now, let's go into the correct sentence structure aspect of it. Right. How or where did you first hear about it? Well, like I said, I do a lot of research and things. I I never even knew this uh, technology exists. Um, I was doing research, and then eventually in 2019, I had some legal issues. Um, but prior to that time, my brother and I got connected to UR Law. So it was through UR Law that I seen their program where they said it was going to kind of teach correct sentence structure and so forth. And, you know, between my brother and I, you know, I said, well, it was something interesting to know about. So I was kind of curious. So I kept my membership with them and, you know, I tried to understand the language, but it, it wasn't really making any sense. It didn't seem like something important um, because it was just like a, um, like a, a basic aspect of it. It wasn't the entire grammar. So, but then something just clicked and I was just hungry to learn this grammar. And then that's how I came across Full Call and David and I started researching this video, watching it as much as I could, but I still wasn't getting it. But I still wanted to learn this language. It was important to me that there was something within me that's, that was just calling out, like, you need to learn this grammar. Because I'm the kind of person I like to present myself with respect, honor, and grace. And I feel like language in general, I have problems with it. Let's just say that. So after all that, I mean, I, I did my research on the internet. I was surprised one day when I came across your channel. 
And I started to watch the videos and I was surprised that it was actually available to the public. And I was nervous to try to contact you. And well, here we are now. Now, when you did contact me uh, to learn this grammar, what, why did you want to learn it? Like specifically, why did you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar? When I actually started seeing that this language gives me the opportunity to show the fraud in my day-to-day -day activities, I mean, we're all aware of what goes on in our life. But when I started to see that I needed the right tools to counterbalance that, and I felt like that was the only thing available to bring in my arsenal for me to be able to come respectfully, because most times when something is not right, we tend to want to come out harsh or blameful or point fingers, but rather I want to come with a, this is how I understand something. I don't truly understand because this is your language, but this is my perspective on it. If I'm wrong, give me the opportunity to stop and correct. But if I'm right, then this is where we stand. This is kind of pretty much what the language in a basic, simple step, you know, kind of means to me. So I was really, really I, I guess I would use the word desperate to really learn this language because it will help balance my entire core because this is who I am. And that's why I really want to learn the language to be able to remove fraud out of my life and to be able to move and navigate respectfully. That was awesome, my friend, because I that you just put in a nutshell what a lot of people just don't get about quantum grammar. A lot of people, and we know who they are, <laughs> they're, they're out there promoting it as if it's like a baseball bat, but I it's agree. not. It's not. It's more like a, a force field that you surround yourself with when you navigate a force yes. field of safety to keep the trespass out exactly. with peace and neutrality. And that's how it is 100% successful. So thank you for, mm. for articulating it that way. That was <laughs> awesome. No, thank you. So now coming on to, to learning it, when you began taking classes from me, what was your experience of that? Like with me as a tutor and you don't have to hold back, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Well, let's just say, to be honest, the first day I was so nervous that I really didn't catch anything, but I was so desperate to come back that I went back and watched the entire videos on the website again and try to be more familiar. And there was one video, I think, that really caught my attention. I really made me caught up to syntaxing, which was um, really understanding, one, the tangible and non-tangible, and then two, really understanding what really the pronoun serves, you know, what, what the, the verbs um, on adverb is there for, what, what, by understanding those things, and you started to know that if, if, if this one is non-tangible or tangible, you start to get your own understanding, then when you're looking at those documents and you're reading those, you're coming from your own perspective because you have clarity on the fact that you had, def you had defined this and you know that. It's not guessing or it's not somebody telling you. You are actually seeing it and you know why you're banking those values and you're putting it there with the best intention because you can only understand somebody's vessel from the or document from the best perspective that you have you know through you know what you know what you're giving as far as you know how that goes so when i actually started when i seen that video when we came back the second time when you was trying to go over and started to go step by step with me i was clicking and it started to make sense and i started to, to follow along and because i like to think i like things to be brought to me at the simplest form I mean, sometimes we all try to make it really, really complicated, but the way you brought it to me was very simple to a, a level that even I can say, because if we're reading at a second grade level, I feel like that was brought down to me at a second grade level and I could understand it. And now I can navigate myself because I know what I'm doing. Well, thank you for that. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it was, it was really simple. It was, it, I don't, it, it's like it, it's comp you know, it's complicated when you look at it but then when you when you start when you were working with me i started to see you know the patterns and you started to see things that it just it just started clicking you know i think that's you know and, and a lot of credit goes to my tutor colon raven hyphen farhad hyphen tohiti colon efren for simplifying everything and we together after i got closure on the grammar began developing a consistent system that everyone could come into that geometric level playing field and knowledge cultivation yeah. and learn it the same so that your syntax values would be banked the same as mine, the same as yeah. someone else over here, instead of all this haphazard guesswork <laughs> and mystery. <laughs> I agree. 
So in the course of, of learning this, then after you got a rudimentary closure on the grammar and began using it, um, then we began working on document contract postal vessel court venues for yourself and your construct. Right. One of the first things was um, yeah. you didn't have a correct live life claim no. for you nor for your wife. Right. And then um, what ended up happening was I was like, hey, my wife and myself would be glad to be correct witnesses for your live life claim. And then yep. you mailed them to me. Yeah. We witnessed one another via video. Right. Because if you're going to be a correct witness on a live life claim, you have to witness it. See here, you know, so that I know you're a living, breathing exactly. creature. And so that's mm -hmm. how we did it. And I sent it back to you. And then you got your live life claim uh, completed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that out there because of those of the viewers who are watching who are having difficulty with this. It's not hopeless. You, all you have to do is ask. You know, you just have to find a correct live life claimant with a correct live life claim. And there you go. Yeah. So to move on to the other documents, um, would you like to share any other documents that you've used with this correct grammar? Yeah, I, um, after because the first thing, of course, to try to position your live life claim in order to navigate. Then I did my fit rate volition because although I'm navigating as a living vessel and I have control of that vessel, I need to know I need the ent other entity to know that I'm navigating peacefully, neutrally, and respectfully. And that's what the fit rate volition is um, is there for. And then accompanying that, you know, growing up, we have our faith base and I'm truly faith based and I have a different position on how I carry my faith. And that's, I also created my Christian oath um, documents. So as um, in quantum grammar, so at least there is an understanding between other parties to know where I stand as far as my faith and that goes. So I have three um, documents and then I have others that have that I'm um, reservation of um, freedoms and other things that I'm putting together just to kind of have my entirety covered as far as not leaving any room for <laughs> for any entity to think that um, they have jurisdiction or whatever authority over me without first asking per my permission. And to clarify a little bit on what Nathaniel's talking about here with his Christian oath is that when we were in the midst of, of, of creating that document and he was articulating to me what the facts of the document that he wanted to convey I was asking him, what's your closure on this? What's your closure on that? Because not because I'm challenging his spiritual, um, to use a fiction word, beliefs, mm -hmm. but his spiritual volitions, not because of that, but because in order to be successful and safe with your correct sentence structure conveyances, you have to have closure on the facts. You have to be able to articulate that. And he did successfully. So these are these are awesome documents that he's created. And as he's saying, he's creating other documents. So this is just to show everyone that wherever you are in the now space location, you can create any document contract postal vessel court venue you wish, as long as you have closure on what it is you're saying. There can be no guesswork. There's no opinion. It's a fact. And it is a fact located in your dictionary, which is the document contract postal vessel court venue that governs your construct. Yep. And you mentioned live life claim, fate revolution claim, the Christian oath. Are there any other oh, ones? I also have my dictionary, of course. I'm adding on it uh, as often as I possibly can. So yes, I do have that as well. And all of my documents, of course, if you're going to make them, you have to register them, of course. So um, just so you're aware, it's not just writing the documents, but it's also making sure that they are accounted for that there you are making claim to them you're not just creating the document and leaving it up in the air just you know as a fyi right you're putting the the postal mechanics into use the same way that you would do it for a live life claim is right. the same way you do it for any other document exactly. i think a lot of people miss that it's not complicated <laughs> at all it's actually very very simple to do these things yep. it's how they used to do it in the old days when when an author would would write a book they would just send it to themselves registered so that they would have nativity stewardship or ownership over, right. over that, uh, 
that document. So having said that, with these documents that you've created, do you have any plans for the future, whether it's with Correct Sentence Structure or anything else, any programs or projects you'd like to share? I have a few things that I've been thinking about that I've um, been wanting to do, but as of right now, because I'm so comfortable with my grammar, with the grammar um, in all aspects of the grammar, all three aspects, because that's one of the things um, we out there who have been trying to learn this grammar, we think it's just a one thing, but there's three aspects of it. And that's why I love your channel to break those things down into, into categories. And I feel like I can function in every category, all three at a, at a very proficient and efficient level. And I feel safe using it. So now um, I'm in the process of, creating my documents, you know, kind of just stating, um, you know, where, where I stand as a man, because I was once a minor in the eyes of men. And now that I've hit the age of majority by that, the document itself, you know, the, the grammar itself helps you to kind of become and see that you are at the age of majority and you are, you do have all the authority within you to be able to navigate yourself. As long as you're doing it peacefully and respectfully, you don't want to step on somebody's toes. You want to hurt, hurt nobody. So pretty much I'm putting together this document and every entity that I'm involved with, um, that I may engage with, or I might do business with, or I might, um, whatever interaction that we may have in the, in the, what we will say the fiction world or wherever it may be, I'm just kind of alerting it as to who I am, where I'm, um, how I'm going to be navigating this world. That if I'm moving from point A to point B, I am moving with respect, with the honor and the grace. Um, I, I have no intention to do anyone harm. I intend to be moving um, in in any way that, uh, of course, we want to respect the law, but it's, um, there is some aspect as to where, um, you know, just kind of stating my terms and condition, you know, um, as it works in long term. Just kind of say, just pretty much saying. This is uh, my terms and condition. Is this how I'm choose to navigate my vessel in this world? That, and that's just one aspect of it too. Well, as we spoke about before we came on air here, that that's basically posting your roads to the world, giving your terms and conditions and uh, uh, some other instruments that would come into play with that would be CPAS C Treaty, yeah. which basically... In the fiction, you have a birth certificate. In the fact, mm -hmm. you have a claim of the live life. Mm -hmm. In the fiction, you have a passport. In the fact, you have what? A CPAS C treaty. C treaty. Yeah. So then you come in with these other documents. Like, for example, at the beginning, three, two or three years ago, at the beginning of the medical mess that happened, mm -hmm. I created what I called a domicile claim where I put out the terms and conditions for this domicile as authority of the domicile, as commander oh. and master of the domicile, okay. how people like were that. to conduct themselves when they were here, um, okay. as far as anything medical or anything to do, I put into that document that mm. we were well capable with the right. authority to diagnose anything mm -hmm. as far as safety concerns and things like that. And also... Yeah. Okay. that if you were a malicious trespasser, if you mm. did not observe these terms and conditions and you came here, there was a price for that. You have to pay a mm. fee for freight. Mm. And that price might be a broken leg or it might be <laughs> your life. Mm. If you come here uninvited as a hostile, mm. you know, whatever, combat. Belligerent. <laughs> yeah, and I filed that in to uh, some of the local venues around here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there would have been a problem or not, but I just, as you said, you know, I'm just posting roads saying right. this is, yep. this is the deal. So that's sort of what you're talking about. Exactly. You know, cause it's all about notice. Um, if they don't know, they don't know. You can't just walk around as soon as someone can read your mind. You know, you have to just like, if they want you to know something, they'll, they'll let you know something. And that's, that's pretty much, you have to do that in return. That's the respect and the honor and the grace, the level playing field. You know, you can expect someone to just hey man i knew you wanted to do that thanks for telling me that you know <laughs> that doesn't work like that so you got to let people know give them notice so they they you know at least they can be blindsided so. and one thing that i found that was really useful is that you know back in the day when colin david eiffel and colin miller and his students or whomever would talk about creating these documents they would just send uh, their version of a correct sentence structured document to an entity. 
I took that a step further with the help of Colin Raven in that I now translate the correct sentence structure into plain English using brackets and quotations and, and italics and things like that for the balance of the honor and the grace so that there can be no misunderstanding because it would be like if, if I'm using this grammar and I hand to an English speaking individual, I hand them, you know, a contract in Russian or something and they can't read it. They don't know yeah. what it is. Exactly. So it's the same thing. It's the balance of the honor and the grace. Now I translate everything. Mm -hmm. Do you and do I, that as well? And I, uh, I do take that. I took that practices off of you as well. Um, so when I'm writing a document, um, I usually put it in English first because I am reaching out to English individuals. Um, I'm not very great at English. I do my best, my very best, and I articulate from the very best of my ability. And then after I construct that, then I put my correct. Uh, then I confirm. Um, then I translate it into correct sentence structure. Um, usually I would do, if I'm just writing a document for the court, I would do it as you would do it, but because I'm sending it to a larger entity, I want to separate the actual doc, because the actual um, physical document that I want them to be more attentive of, to just be full, correct sentence structure, and then there'll be the translated version in plain, simple English that will also be available for them to read as well. So everything that is in that is just translated in English for them, you know, so they don't have to keep going through after they read it. So they can just kind of read the entire one. And if they don't want to read the correct sentence structure, it's up to them. They have the option. Fairness, honor, and the grace. I feel like that's that's the best. You don't give them room to, to say, oh, you know, I couldn't, you know, it wasn't, right. you know, yeah. Yeah, that's a, you know, contract is by consent. If they choose not to read the correct version, that's up to them. But they can't say that they didn't get it. Yep, exactly. Just out of curiosity, do you speak more than one language like more than english is there another language you speak unfortunately due to um not usability i have forgot pretty much all of them. i used to speak french a little bit a little bit of spanish but mm, these things nowadays is i can barely hold a conversation <laughs> yeah if so, you don't use it you lose it right yeah so those are already gone but it would have been great to um to kind of, I, I I feel like it's still possible to relearn them, but um, got too many things going on. Like I, like you were asking me about my project, I got other projects that I wanted to do as well with the grammar. Um, so it kind of keeps you busy. Um, because I want people to know that when you come to, for me, I don't know how. Um, for my, for for me, I see this as something that um, it's a way of life. I don't just come at it and then um, I learn it. I take care of one problem. And then I put it to the side and then I start doing my, my normal thing. No, this is a way of life. This is how I'm starting to navigate myself because then I'm actually in denial or I'm actually um, lying to myself and to the other entity that, oh, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm saying I am, but um, I'm operating this way. So you you kind of you, you kind of have to live your life the way you choose to live it. Don't pick and choose. So if you want to learn content grammar, learn it and use it as a thing that you got to do on a daily basis. And that's why for me, when I don't have anything to do, my second project was hoping to have like a YouTube channel or maybe um, work with my tutor here to kind of advise me to kind of see, because um, a lot of things that we'll understand life better if we can kind of go through manuals. Because if you don't have nothing to do, you have nothing to syntax, you go through different manuals that affects your life. Um, whatever it could be a contract from maybe if you want to go get a loan one day, maybe because they won't let you sit there and read a contract. Maybe there's somebody else's, or maybe they may have it on the website. Print it out, start working on it. You you might find syntaxing is so fun. I mean, you, you when you start syntaxing, you <laughs> it's it, it's so enjoyable that you enjoy reading. So like that's one of the reasons why you want to learn the grammar because then you start to really enjoy reading because you're banging values and you kind of getting a little idea of what's going on. You're educating yourself. You you you're empowering yourself. So um, that's just one of another aspect of how just kind of going through a manual so people kind of see how, you know, syntax, I, you know, my tutor does it very well on there. But if you want to actually do documents that affect your day to day life, maybe that's something, you know, I was hoping my tutor was going to put on the show to kind of show some of you out there how those documents are, you know, but his time, I know he got a lot going on, a lot of people reaching out to him. So that's one of the reasons. I know, you know, he can only do so much with his time, 
So I hope that one day that either we can work together and have that kind of, you know, incorporated. That would be nice. I think it will benefit a lot of people. So that's another project that I was thinking about. Mm. That's pretty amazing. Thanks for sharing that. That's a great idea. And what you just did there is sort of what I did when I started out in February of 2018, when I first came out into the public on YouTube, mm -hmm. I created the YouTube channel with the volition of filling a void that I saw mm -hmm. from those videos with Colin David Eiffel and Cole Miller, where he would explain how to do things, but not why. Like mm -hmm. not, he wouldn't say why a vowel in front of a consonant meant no right. at the beginning of a word. So that was my volition to fill that void there. And so now you've just found a void, another void on YouTube where, you know, syntaxing what you call manuals. And I have to bring this up. Uh, I got to show you something here. A right. little bit of correct sentence structure history. This book. Secret right. Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. All. See how small the print is? <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> okay it's a very big book now this is the book I... that colin david i for win colin miller claims to have syntaxed he syntaxed it and cover then to wrote cover? it cover to cover and then wrote it <clears throat> with his version of correct sentence structure and that is why he claimed to be a 92nd degree mason because he syntaxed and rewrote this book that is very uh, interesting to know Hmm. I just wanted to put that out there. That is now. No I wonder. I wonder how word. long it took him. You know, not out of curiosity. Now I wonder how long did it take him to syntax that. You know, <laughs> the curiosity comes to being. You know, you can only wonder. Yeah, I mean, he he would throw out numbers like he's done eighty thousand hours of this and sixty thousand hours of that. And so in that same spirit, like I say things like I'm, I'm probably well over 25,000 hours of performance. And I calculate that by determining how many hours a day, every day, yeah. do I use correct sentence structure? Do I teach it? Um, yeah. Anything like that. And that's about the, the, the number I come up with when I go from the middle of 2017 until now. Yeah. And so that brings up a very important point that you came up with a little bit ago was that to do it every day, like I do it every day because I teach it. I create content. I do, you know, documents, teach it. So I, that's, but before I did that, I did have to find ways to use it every day. I was very um, adamant about it. I would walk into grocery stores and speak to cashiers using correct sentence structure, but just <laughs> thinking back on it now, I feel bad for them because why would I do that? They don't know what, what I'm saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would walk around with my CPAS C treaty or what I thought was a CPAS C treaty. I had no idea back then what it was, but I would want people to ask me about it just so that I had to be put on the spot and explain it to them. Right. And those things were invaluable to me, although I would not recommend that to people now to do that to beginners because you might get yourself into a little bit of trouble these days. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you gotta, you have to do it every day. It's like walking up mm -hmm. a down escalator. If you're doing anything but moving forward, you're going backwards. That's what I, what I do is like, I pick a sentence in the day and I said, is this is the sentence? Then I would just construct it in correct sentence structure. And I would just um, say it to myself the entire day that I can remember, you know, whatever that sentence was that I wrote in, sent in you know, correct sentence structure. I would just be saying it throughout the day not you know just to kind of get the rhythm of the how i'm you know position uh, and the positioning because there will come a time where i may have to perform live you know and actually speak you know with, with using correct sentence structure and that's where i feel like that's the only avenue where i may be a little weakened because i, I have to put thoughts into it because um rather than just speaking naturally i will have it will probably take me about five ten minutes to cons, um, construct a sentence because i have to put thought into it to make sure i get in the position and everything right but it does you know I'm, those are things i just working on to make myself you know more fluent with it because syntax is something i can just do it i can just grab a newspaper and just start syntax and have fun mm -hmm. with that and that's just like you know, if anything I want to read, if I just want to just, I just, you know, syntax is, even if that two sentences I want to syntax, I have done something for, you know, using the grammar for today. Just try to do something daily, 
you know, when people start to realize that once you learn it and then you are, are applying it daily, it's just something, it's, it's like playing music. Because I love playing music as well. I create music um, um, for myself. It's like playing music. If you learn it, you know it for a fact. You would just want to just, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, if it's something important. You would just want to syntax something. You, know, you might want to just look up the etymology or something just out of curiosity. Because it's it's going to be fun to you. But if it's something you just want to do as in like a quick in and out, then that's the reason it, it, it it's not going to be very fun. It's going to be unpleasant. Well, it's funny that you brought what what you just brought up about as far as knowing what you're doing and creating verbally on the spot, you know, sentences. That's how what was a big part of my learning process was to speak correct sentence structure out loud, a sentence, and then say it backwards and try and remember what the sentence was and say it backwards. And I just addressed this in a live stream that I did today, actually, where someone was saying you have to know the song before you sing it. And I said, well, let's take that to a deeper level. Let's go in depth with that. You don't necessarily have to know a song before you sing it. You can improvise. Mm -hmm. What you do have to know is the location of the notes <laughs> so that you don't go sharp or flat. Yep. You know, if you mean yep. to go a whole step up, but you only mm -hmm. make it a half step, you don't know yeah. where that note is. <laughs> so this is like with correct sentence structure. If you know the mechanics, you can improvise. Yep. You can use it in, in a improv imp improvisational scenario. Yep. I agree hundred percent. And people shouldn't overlook this grammar. It's um it's a very good tool to have. Um I I personally feel it's working well for me. I have used it in several um arenas. Um usually you're not gonna get like a yes, I won out of the arena, but you would you will see something that you don't usually see, or if you're not very attentive to it, then you actually end up digging yourself in a little bit more hole because um, sometimes you have to realize the forces that you are um, up against and how they they operate. Um, they have a one level, um, I, on one, it, it's not like they, they won't say, oh, you got me, or it's like a level where like, <laughs> you know, I think you got us, but, you know, we're going to make it look like we won. Take it as that. And then, but if you feel like you want to, you have cocky, you still want to go further, then that's when you kind of, you know, you got to, you got to know the language of the system as what are you going against. You don't want to, you don't want to prove something. You just want to stop the trespass. Because mm -hmm. if you try to prove something, then you have more trouble. And that's why I feel a lot of people kind of going just, going to make sure that the system don't trespass against you instead of trying to, because the system has been defrauded for as long as we know it. And, you know, and it takes a unity force to really kind of change that. So it's not going to just take one person to just automatically change it because it's, it's a circle of things going on. So navigating and learning the language and moving respectfully and knowing when you have won in the way that you know you have won and accepting you're one and 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 moving respectfully, then you know how to then you know how you're using the language, how you're using the, the the technology. And to take it one step further, you can get out of that uh sort of competitive mindset if you choose and take the winning and losing out of it and just determine whether it's successful or not. Yep. Um yep. because if you if you go into a situation mentally thinking about winning, then that means there's a loser. Mm-hmm. So with the position of peace and neutrality and the balance of the honor and the grace, those types of things don't fit in. It's a win-win situation for everyone. Mm -hmm. So what normally happens, like you said, the fiction isn't usually like, oh, you got me. Darn, darn it with your <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> you, you. <laughs> that doesn't happen. What happens is they just leave you alone. Or they, they might give you a slap on the wrist, even though you might yeah. feel like, you know, you, you, you got to know how there's some things too in life. Um, one may have to take accountability for it's your own action. Um, you have to also realize you have your private life and you, it needs to be respected. And that's what the grammar is for to help protect your private life. But you're also engaging in the public and you also have to realize as defrauded as it is, 
you also have to have respect for the public as well. You have to be an agent in respect to make sure that you're not causing harm on the public. So if you're going 20 miles over the speed limit and you want to use correct sentence structure, I mean, use it to navigate yourself, to, to put yourself in a, in, in, in a peaceful place. But you, you can't say that, oh, you're going to use it to get rid of the ticket. Sometimes you will, depending on the situation. But the fact is that it's still, you you have to know that there's danger in, 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 in all things. You have to know, you have to be able to accept certain accountability for your action as well. That's what I feel like. Some people feel like even when they get you a slap on the wrist, they still want, you know, like a, like a zero because they feel like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be doing it. I, I should be speeding as far as no. You have to be respectful for others. Um, there is there is just a way in life you have to understand. It's just you're not above anybody. Neither is anybody above anybody. That's why there's a plain, neutral, level, plain field for everybody to operate under. Um, so if anybody, if people can accept accountability for some of their actions, um, then you might use this language effectively and safely. Now you won't be harming other people because you'll be going to court giving people the wrong you know, interpretation because everybody wants to jump in court and use quantum grammar and be the next cool cat. You know, <laughs> it's not about that. <laughs> it's not about being cool. It's just about being smooth. I don't know. It's I get, you know, I can't count the number of emails I've gotten people that want to get out of speeding tickets. Uh, one guy, you know, a couple guys actually sent me an email saying, I got a DUI. How can I get out of this? And my first question was, were you drinking and driving? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> like if I look out at the street. I can see the street from where, I, where I'm sitting right here. And I think the residential speed limit is 25 miles per hour. If you go down the street going 50 miles per hour and you're going to try and use correct sentence structure to get out of that, you, mm. you're going to not only I can predict <laughs> you're going to fail, but you just karmically <laughs> it's going to come back on you in some way. Yeah. You have to pay for that. Because mm -hmm. you're going to irritate people, and that's what it is, you know. What if I mean, you hit a child? I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. That's that's one of the things that people don't want to take um, responsibility for their actions because they want to use something to just get away from what they believe is, you know. I mean, we know the government is enforcing our life. We don't want other things, but you're not allowed to put people in danger. That's the whole thing about common law. You got to put make sure you put your brothers, sisters, and other individuals out in the world into account that, you don't want to cause them harm. So if if society as a whole, we agree that going 50 miles an hour would be very safe to be aware, you know, I mean, it's re it, it's not about majority rules. You look at things from a safety point of view and you look at it from a respectful point of view and you also look at like from, from your point of view as well. You know, if somebody was, you don't want nobody to trespass against you. So as a collective, if, if, if everyone agree on like, this is a good thing that 50 might give awareness. You know, it's something to consider. So if you're operating and navigating, you don't want to cause harm to an agreement between parties. So you you um you navigate respectfully through um through that area because you're going to be engaging in the public everywhere you go. The only private place you have, unless if you own your own home and you have a load of your title, then maybe you might have a private domain. But if you're out in the public, everything you do is public. So you just want to make sure you navigate yourself respectfully because arrogance, strong chest is just, that's not the way of, of quantum grammar. It's just, it's, it's, you just got to be more uh, respectful of others, be mindful of yourself. And that's how this techno uh, technology will work for you. And to put it in a negative condition of state, it's just do no harm. If your volition is to be out there to do no harm, I mean, it's common sense and logic. When you see that placard on the side of the road that says 50, mm -hmm. you know, or you see the placard that says school zone 15, you know that it's for a reason. It's for public safety. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to contend with the fact that the fiction system uses these signs to generate revenue because of people who will willfully disobey it. Of course, <laughs> But it's creating mm -hmm. a public safety hazard in the same at the same time. So I think people get it. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. take accountability for yourself and your actions. I myself have not had any traffic, anything for mm -hmm. geez, since like 2014. Mm -hmm. I have no reason to. I'm in no hurry. The now space. Mm -hmm. That's two <laughs> things about correct sentence structure. <laughs> closure and plenty of now space to get that closure. Two mm -hmm. things to remember. 
All right, Nathaniel, is there anything else you'd like to share before we go? No, just that I just thank you for having me because uh, one of the things I'm, I, I appreciate what you do because a lot of us need to learn these languages. I envision, um, hopefully, this is a wild dream of mine, but hopefully one day we could create a system or school network where we actually teach quantum grammar in our school so that you know people are getting these information at an earlier where they can apply these things earlier in life and you, you know I, I mean from looking around I really feel like we are entering the age of quantum um, and I feel like positively things will get there I feel like eventually with individual help works and with the right intent as far as the grammar goes I feel like we will enter the um the, quant the quantum age you know, where we learn these things as instead of just doing it like this, it'll be an actual thought process where, you know, the, the, the world will actually be trying to catch up on because they see the benefit, they see the, 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 the uniqueness in it. And I can only envision that those things will yet come to be. Yeah, that would be that would be a wonderful thing to happen for the world, for the earth to have a quantum grammar, an actual physical school. That, that would teach children how to use yeah. correct sentence structure, they would also have to learn whatever their native tongue is, of course, mm -hmm. for whatever their common location is, but to also incorporate uh, correct sentence structure with that. Yeah. Because it's, it's my experience that people who are hesitant to learn correct sentence structure, why, why wouldn't you want to learn a grammar that nails the facts down to a geometric level playing field so there's no wiggle room to interpret anything. That's a rhetorical question, by the way, because you just have to look at the legal system for the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And just to the public out there, everything that I said today, um, please take it as a plain colloquial English. Do not uh, take what I'm saying and try to put it into the quantum grammar lens because I was really trying to convey my thoughts to you through plain, simple English. And I hope you see it from that perspective. And also... The gram not that a grammar is not hard, but it's really not hard. Just put aside your the negative thinking, the negative thoughts. And you will, the grammar is really easier than you think. If you need to start, just study knowing the different the, 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 the four different aspects of those. Try to try to know what the what uh, as far as the pronoun will, will, you know, in quantum grammar as far as not in plain simple English. Try to understand what what pronoun will represent and how what what function it will serve. If you're not yet doing a um a you know having a section with my my tutor, which I would highly recommend because then you'll give you a guide. But try to focus on these things because it will help you know how to bank those values because those are the way you'll be banking. If you focus on getting closure, which one is tangible, which one is not tangible, and how it applies, then you'll start to understand things for yourself. Put the time in. It's not something. It's not how fast. Just put some time in. And put some money in too, because everybody wants wants things for free, and that's not how the world works. You don't go to school for free; they're kind of they're banking off of you. So if you're going to learn something, at least something that has value, please put some time into it, put some money into it, whatever it may be, because it's something that's valuable. Take the negative thought away; it can be learned. If I learn it, and I'm not saying that I'm, and that's the negative statement. I'm not saying that I'm the um, don't miss me on the planet, but I feel like if I can understand something in the simplest form, anybody can understand it because we all operate, we have our own brains to, to understand things. And I feel like you can get it no matter how complicated it is. And if you want to really learn a language, just schedule a, a section with my tutor. And this is not advertising. This is not something planned because I wanted to think that people will say, oh, this is like, they will talk about it. But personally for me, I just want this to benefit the world. And that's what I'm saying. Schedule a time really get the grammar you will you will see the benefit once you start to learn and you put the time into it don't just go around trying to find a, a shortcut a shortcut is not something with this i don't think you went to school taking shortcuts because if you're the kind of person that was fighting up a someone test to get to your grade then well good luck to you and have a blessed day yeah it's like i say to people you know when you look at doctors and in the field you're in if you look at doctors Doctors that go to school for a number of years, you know, there, there are doctors that got straight A's, honor roll students. Mm. And then there are doctors that sat in the back of the class who are D plus, maybe C students who are looking at someone else's paper 
but they got the same degree. Mm -hmm. So how do you know what you're getting? Well, you have to vet mm -hmm. them first. Mm -hmm. I you can agree. immediately tell if someone knows what they're talking about or if they don't know what they're talking about. So thank you for those kind words, Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to use a quote of yours. Um, you said at one time, you said, there are no cheat codes for quantum grammar. <laughs> and that is 100% correct. There are no shortcuts. Mm -mm. Um, that's, that's about it. Thank time. you very much for being on here, Nathaniel, and taking the time. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Awesome. Thank you for having me. All right. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank Nathaniel and wish everyone a great day. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for this edition of For the Continuum Conversations, the Quantum Grammar Talk Show. If you think that you have a cool, correct sentence structure story or some knowledge to share with your fellow mankind on planet Earth, having to do with quantum grammar, correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax grammar, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, and I'll set up a little interview with you to see if this is indeed something that you could share with the rest of the earth. Having said that, if you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, also use the email address at the bottom of your screen, and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult with you uh, so you can apply for the correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar workshops that I provide. There are also memberships available on this YouTube channel. Hit the join button at the bottom and you'll get more information on the two tiers of membership available. The second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Again, thanks for joining me for the talk show, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.